here on K24. My name is Dibala Inair and uh, I'm holding court with Sir Senator Aaron Chiriot, who's a senator for uh, Kericho County. We have also with us uh, Senator Congo Mogini, the senator for Nyamira County, Senator Mithika Linturi, Meru County. We have also member of parliament. This is Dr. Seli Simiu, who is a member of parliament for Tongaren, and Jacob Medio, the former member of parliament for Game as well. We have a raft of issues that we're discussing, and uh, mm -hmm. again, sincerely, my apologies that uh, yes, we had some technical challenges and uh, we had actually to just go off air a bit to sort it out. They always say monkeys are hanging on the line. So it seems monkeys were hanging on my lines today. But nonetheless, we continue the conversation apace. Now, before we took a short break and uh, we had actually promised you that we will continue our paying tribute, as I mentioned earlier from my intro, before even the fresh cloud of soil has settled on Yusuf Haji and also... Uh, on Simeon Yachai, the country is mourning today also the passing on of Bunchari Member of Parliament. Uh, this is Mr. Oyoko and just want to give uh, a little bit of time to our panelists to pay their tribute this evening and uh, also condole with their family. Uh, let's just begin with uh, Aaron Chirot. I think we were all new where the mark, the, the mark started acting up. Okay, but I was just my, my remarks on uh, celebrating yes. the life and times of Senator, the late Senator Yusuf Haji that he distinguished himself as a public servant yes. who uh, strived hard to gain excellence in whatever the public life uh, threw him into, whether as an administrator or as a member of parliament, or even when he was given national assignments to execute, uh, he did it with distinction. You must remember uh, one of the most challenging times he had to face in the last few days of his life was uh, last year. Yes. When, despite being a very respectful mze who respected authority, respected the president and the executive, had to stand up for the people of Garissa by rejecting the formula that had been brought to the Senate that would have uh, denied them additional funds. That was not a very interesting time, but it was very uh, good to see the way, and every time he rose to speak, he would say, I respect the executive, but given a choice between respecting the executive and standing up for the people who elected me to the Senate, I'll always choose the people of Garissa. Mm -hmm. That was uh, Yusuf, Yusuf Haji. The only sad bit uh, about how it ended for him is that after working so hard during that uh, debate on uh, revenue formula, all that we achieved has been watered down by uh, the proposal that is before the uh, county assemblies now mm -hmm. with uh, the BBI process, where the introduction of per capita basis of revenue allocation where it is proposed that no county shall uh, receive more than three times the per capita of the other. You, I'm sure you do know that currently the variance is at six actually. Nairobi being the least at uh, 3,000 uh, Kenya shillings per person and Lamu being the highest at 18,000 because of so many other factors. And it was really a paradox sort of that he fought so hard for the people of Garissa to not to be discriminated on the basis of revenue allocation. But then as chair of BBI, of course, it wasn't in his person alone to make a determination on what would be good for his people that that uh, sad bit was introduced. Maybe it's something that uh, with the coming to, of BBI to parliament that uh, we should be able to find a way of addressing it uh, respectfully. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Dibal, uh, we do mourn our colleague, the Honorable John Oro, uh, Oyoka, uh, I always struggle with the third name, but he's also a distinguished uh, public servant. He served the people of Kericho well. Uh, he was a teacher at a school called Cheptenye and uh, Kericho Day School uh, for many, many years. Therefore, he's somebody who's known uh, well mm -hmm. to the people of Kericho. There was a very important uh, piece of legislation uh, that I came to know about towards last year, uh, December. I had noticed so many young people were complaining about the invasion of uh, mobile money lending sharks in uh, internet space in Kenya. Yes. Therefore, I brought a question to uh, Parliament, and in the course of that question being answered and me doing further research, when CBK, uh, Central Bank of Kenya, appeared before our Committee on Finance and Budget, the Governor actually informed us that there was a member of Parliament who had sponsored a, a bill uh, to try and uh, <coughs> manage that unfortunate situation. It turned out that that member of parliament actually is the Honorable John Oro. Uh, mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that that bill is still in the, pending in the National Assembly at the second stage. I hope in his honor 
his colleagues in the National Assembly, uh, SLE and company, will conclude that law and uh, so that we can be able to manage that uh, menace. So he was a progressive, despite being old uh, and advanced in age, he identified with problems of young people because this uh, mobile money lending applications. And most people who are trapped in these uh, loan situations are young people. The young people so yes. I celebrate him for that. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Aaron Let's hear from uh, Senator Okongo Mogini, briefly. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dibal. Uh, I think it's a very dark uh, moment for the country. No, it's not uh, in many uh, times that you lose two members of parliament on two consecutive days. Mm. You know, like we have lost, uh, we lost Yusuf Haji yesterday, today we lost Oro Iyoka. It, it just points to fairly tough times ahead and uh, we really must uh, turn to the Almighty God to really come in for us as, as a country. Now, um, I knew Mze Haji uh, way back in uh, 1982 uh, when he was a PC. And he visited my school uh, then, Highlands Primary School in Kericho. I was in class six. Oh. And uh, the next time I interacted with him was in uh, two, 2003, when he sought uh, legal services from my office. Uh, then a very fairly small office in Hajip House. And I did not expect you know, an administrator who had served for that long to look for a lawyer who was based in Hajip House. But that's how humble. Um, Muzi Haji was, uh, you know, if you look at the administrators who served with Muzi Haji, you'd always find some serious businesses behind them, some companies behind them. But you know, Muzi Haji is just known as a humble Muzi. The way you see him in the parliament is the way you will find him living in his home. A humble, honest Muzi, but very firm. Mm -hmm. You know, when we were going through, uh, you know, that... Uh, debate on uh, uh, revenue sharing. Yes. Most of us, you know, are looking and saying, look, this Mze, his son is a DPP. He's also a member of a BBI task force. You know, this somebody who can speak to the president any time. Mm -hmm. We really didn't believe that Mze Haji will take a very firm stand in favor of his people of Garissa because he knew if he was to vote any other way, then his people were going to lose. And I think we all looked at him as a servant leader, somebody who puts the interest of the people he represents ahead of any other uh, interest. And I can tell you that uh, even in Parliament, there are things Mzeaji could do and get away with it because of the respect he enjoyed across the House. You remember when the three senators were arrested and we summoned uh, the CS Interior, the IG, DCI, and you know, Muzeaji politely but firmly told the media to get out. I can tell you if that was Senator Cheru, you of Senator Minturi, <laughs> they could have been missed meat. But because of the respect he enjoyed, he just told us, look, because uh, this matter involves national security, it's a sensitive matter, I've served in government, I know what I'm talking about, let's do this in the camera. And I can tell you all the senators who are in the room, said, okay, if this is coming from the Haji, we trust him. It's okay. The media can live. That is our father figure whom mm -hmm. the Haji was to us. Thank I can you. tell you that uh, with his death, the Senate is the poor. It's a big loss. We have lost a man who was very experienced, a man who would count on, a man who could draw a line when he's taking a, a stand on a matter that is of interest to his people and put psychophancy aside. There's a lot mm -hmm. we young uh, members of Senate can learn from the life of Mze Yusuf Haji. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sad, uh, the case of Mze Oro Oyoka is a, a very sad one because he's twice unlucky. He was elected uh, as a member of parliament in 2013. Mm -hmm. Uh, he served, uh, uh, I mean somebody served, he went to court in a petition in the High Court, he went back to the House, then uh, the other member went to the Court of Appeal and uh, his, uh, his, his win was nullified, they went back to a by-election, he didn't serve his full term. And uh, he went back, won in two, 2017, and there you are, 
again he has passed on before serving his full term. I really want to pass my message of condolences to, to his family, uh, to the people of, of Onchari who have lost a very, very dedicated uh, member of parliament. Thank May you. God rest the souls of the two parliamentarians in eternal peace. Thank you, thank you very much. Senator Alenturi. Yeah, and uh, in, uh, uh, in the interest of time, let me first uh, say that I associate myself with the sentiments of my brothers here in the land to uh, Senator Haji. And uh, let me take a minute or two to say which has, that has not been said. I, I know, I knew Senator Haji. Senator Haji was a, such a peacemaker, a mediator. And just like you heard uh, Senator Mugeni say, because I served with him in the National Security, Defense, and Foreign Relations Committee as my chairman, and because of his, his wisdom, his experience in the management of public affairs, when he was dealing with people that uh, you know, are highly tempered, and especially when it comes to addressing issues. Uh, Senator Haji would really be able to come as down and manage us, because just like Homogeni has said, when the DCI, the ING, and everybody else was appearing before this committee, uh, the tempers were quite high. And man and Senator Haji really managed that meeting and within Haskell. So it's a man that, um, out of that respect that the hand from us couldn't even escape easily with Manda. And uh, uh, I would want to say personally, because he was my chair, uh, as a committee, we've missed, we shall miss Senator Haji, and more so because he was so honest, he was, I'm saying that was, that uh, was very truthful. His wise counsel is unparalleled. And I think this the cruel hand of death has really uh, robbed this country. I am saying who I wish would have lived to see the end of the finality of this process that he understood uh, called the BBI. So may God rest his soul in eternal peace and to continue praying for the family and I am sure God has every reason and uh, we can't question thank you for speaking on this. Thing. Right, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Eseli. Uh, very I briefly. Think, I think I had said my bit before. You, you said your bit, okay. Yes. Good. Let's uh, also hear from Jacoy. I think he's not spoken since we started the show because of also technical challenges. Uh, yes, my sincere apologies to you, sir. Can I, can I talk now? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm so grateful that uh, we are doing this thing with this great man. The, 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 uh, the senators, I must thank them for showing up today because we, you know, with the, this Haji thing, I am so grateful that you came, that you can be seen in public that one of you have the demise. And Okongo, you have spoken so nicely. Both the three of you, you have spoken so nicely about this issue. I imagine that was a very peaceful museum. Always peaceful. I am also grateful that my former dear, my former dear Yusuf Haji, uh, is that pressed in death. It feels good. He was my dear Niala. Uh, you know, Nyachai was a very good advisor to me. A few times that I visited his office, he always called me young boy. This is how it's going to be. And every time I followed what Nyachai told me, Nyachai and Nyinga Karume and Michuki, it felt good. 
because it was always right. So I'm so happy to understand that uh, Linturi wishes that uh, MZ would have seen the end of BBI. Thank you. Because I just want to say just one more thing. Uh, uh, because, because Linturi is in the other caliphate. <laughs> and so... Uh, so Linturi is what? It's in the other caliphate. Uh -huh. he, he is in this thing, I don't know, Tanga Tanga, <laughs> whatever they call the case. He's become a caliphate. Yeah, no, no, the last time. <laughs> that was a, that was a strong the, the, one. Last time I checked on Linturi, he didn't even have these things around this. He <laughs> 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 looks like Savimbi, but <laughs> but but the mere fact that he looks like that that's he has been uh, and he has recognized Haji <laughs> to would have lived to see the end of this thing. Thank you, my brother. Literally, you're a caliphate. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Thank, thank you, bro. Right, let's just get to the meat of the matter. And, uh, uh, of course, a lot has been happening this past week as far as, uh, you know, the whistle stopping is concerned and uh, the band storming when we see uh, people on the ground campaigning for the BBI as well. Mm. But now we can see, uh, and this has also been very aptly captured by Ozone, if Eddie can just pick up this particular editorial cartoon so that we can begin with it, uh, where the president has been very categorical about Ruto to resign, uh, and so also Ruto is not throwing back, he's saying, you know, of course, uh, I will continue to make sure that we realize the vision of, uh, you know, the Jubilee Party as far as it was enshrined in the manifesto as well. Ozon has drawn this particular editorial cartoon, yeah? Leave if you are fed up. And this is just as a segue uh, to a discussion on this. Uh, I don't know what you've been uh, looking and reflecting on, uh, Honorable Eseli, before we drill uh, deeper on this, because now this seems to be also widening that particular chasm within the... ...the deputy for a private talk uh, to tone down whatever is happening. So I think it's a very dangerous precedent we have set for the country because when I look at the whatever constitutional changes that are intended to be made, that presidency is not being changed. There's still the deputy president who will, who will be elected at the same time with the president. The president can't fire him. Yes. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a dangerous precedent that has been set. I think we need to really look, they, they really need to look at it again and see how best to do it. Because if that were to, to, be, to be carried forward, even into the next dispensation, then we'll just be a, a country of quarreling all the time, right? And that, that's not very good for the country. <laughs> right, sorry. Your reaction? You saw that particular, uh, you know, a spot that was happening between the president. Let yes. me clearly uh, state uh, the position. Because I don't think the Kenyan people, when they decided to give themselves in this constitution, the whole idea was the president and the deputy shouldn't be elected together because the power they were going to get uh, to execute their mandate was to come from the people. And this was unlike before, where the president would just pick anybody who wants to become vice president. And that's even why they want to change from vice. So the president, the current system uh, set up is a deputy president, right? And, uh, and uh, this you know, was meant to stabilize a country so that you cannot just be there jumping to the winds uh, to permanent business, a yes or no, or, or a yes, yes kind of uh, uh, idea. I agree there must be consultation and there must be respect between the two offices. But uh, uh, most important is to ask ourselves, why is this happening? When you have, a, 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 when you have a mandate prescribed in the constitution, and even for fairness, when you want to have it in a manner that remains your indemnity, or you do not assign it, it is as it's required of by the constitution, you make somebody have a very big office, keep somebody behind them. So you know, you can't. You, ca you can't keep somebody ahead of and especially a person that is known to be so active and somebody that has been trying to assist you. And somebody that you are elected together. You know it depends. 
You people do not know because you are not there. You are not the architects uh, for the Jubilee administration kind of thing. And in fact, let me tell you one of the things that one of the ODM people told me one time when we were discussing. They told me, you guys have decided to burn yourself. So the best thing we can do is plant more fuel. So whatever is happening here, just like we are to say once in a while, this game is being planned by, out, by outsiders. And because we have become so blind as the people that are in Jubilee, we don't want to see that we are being set up, then we have got to call it in so we can only blame ourselves. We can only blame our our CEO, right? Or, or whatever is happening. So in my view, I don't think the the, the, the good intentions were there from those that have been the decision to high and this would have given somebody uh, more safety and more ability and, and confidence to execute the mandate of that particular office. And the, the, the first question that has been said is that by way of conduct, that office of the deputy president right now at is, if there was anybody else to aspire to get to that particular <coughs> office, we would only pray that we have someone else who would be in post that would give him one. Otherwise, wh wh what I think as a legislator right now is that we must be giving us, men as parliament, how, how to create or bring up legislation to give duties to that office other than wait permanently for okay. the duties to be delegated to by the president because some presidents or people might take over and such delegation may never happen. Thank you. Thank you. Okongo Mogini. <laughs> um, when I listen to my friend, and he says that the president has not assigned him to work, I wonder to wonder what he means because uh, I think last week we saw an announcement for I the sharing of revenue. Mm. And I think the person who was sharing that, which is a very important thing, was none other than the deputy president. So when we joined the country to the news that uh, the president has denied uh, his duty to work, I can't uh, quite follow that right No, so I, my brother, you know, is the intergovernmental relations act that assigns that responsibility? To the deputy to president. The deputy president. There is not the president that the delegates. All right. So could we say also most of his duties have been assigned to you know the super cabinet, uh, Fred Batiangi? You know, you know uh, Iba, this constitution is largely borrowed from the American constitution. The idea of uh, having a running mate as a deputy president was borrowed from the United States of America. And if you are a good student of history, if you read history, even when uh, Lyndon Johnson proposed to be a vice president. He, he actually said, uh, who is this proposing me to be the side of all of you? Mm. Because you're supposed to be a, a deputy of, a president of, of the president. And you cannot outshine your boss if you want to enjoy the job. In 2016, Biden, if you read his autobiography, is in the market. You can read it. Biden went to speak to Obama. And they told Obama, you know, I want to seek nomination for the, from the current party to be the president. And you know, Obama sat Biden and said, look, for now, Biden, I would propose that you uh, back me up as we try to deliver on our promises to the American people. If you go rally, the focus will turn and you. And the American people will forget where we were elected. And I have the president urging his people, calling him William, calling him first name William. Please stop the early campaigns. Let's deliver on the promises we made to the Kenyan people. So if there is any weakness, you can trace where uh, the problem is. It's because these two gentlemen are not able to agree in principle. But if you ask me, if you are to a yeah, society that has uh, principles, leaders, ethos, and ethics. If you think you have disagreed with your, your principles and you think you are not being given any work, you think he's not banning you from that position, I will ask the same thing the president is asking. Why can't you meet 
Right, let's leave it at that. that. Let's leave it at that. When we circle back, we shall continue with the Aaron Chariot. We take a short break right now just to pay our bills. Then we come back very uh, quickly. Don't go away. <laughs>